My name's Daniel Bushell. The White House concerned about war crimes prosecution. Coming up. Lawyers file for Barack Obama's arrest. World's top war crimes attorney says he will get George W. Bush and huge secret wars you're paying for that you don't even know about. Washington's putting intense and persistent pressure to overturn war crime sentences of other countries' commanders, reveals a top judge at The Hague. Judge Frederick Harhoff says the White House is getting extremely nervous about its own crimes. The court said commanders were responsible for war crimes their subordinates committed. But the chamber suddenly backtracked. The U.S. felt they were getting too close to their own commanders. A Malaysian court already found George W. Bush and his deputies guilty of torture and war crimes. At the trial, Mahathir Mohamed, Malaysia's ex-premier, heard from victims and witnesses and was blunt. These are basically murderers and they kill on a large scale. The eight convicted were John Yoo. Newsweek reports he advised Bush that whole villages can be legally, quote, massacred. The dean of Yale Law School called Jay Bybee's infamous torture memo the most erroneous legal opinion he has ever read. The National Lawyers Guild filed a complaint over William Haynes' recommendations for so-called stress positions and use of dogs against prisoners. Newsweek notes Richard Cheney's lawyer, David Addington, penned the key memorandum that the Geneva Convention doesn't apply to them. Alberto Gonzalez wrote that the laws against torture are, quote, obsolete and quaint. The Senate Armed Services Committee reports Donald Rumsfeld approved the, quote, aggressive techniques used in Guantanamo and black sites around the world. Richard Cheney told the Washington Times he, quote, signed off on the so-called enhanced interrogations. I don't care what the international lawyers say, we're gonna kick some <laughs> said Bush, notes counterterrorism head Richard Clark. The world's leading war crimes lawyer was on that prosecution team. Francis Boyle sent President Milosevic to The Hague in 2001. He was the first to bring an Israeli general to court for atrocities against Palestinians. Now, his lawsuits around the world against Bush are cornering him, stopping him from travel. Professor Boyle, thanks a lot for joining us. Will you get Bush and co, even if they stay at home? Bush and the rest of them have been advised by their attorneys not to be traveling around the world. We're, we're going to get them here, too. They killed about 1.5 million Iraqis. As for U.S. service personnel, uh, Bush and the rest of them murdered about 5,000. Uh, so it, that's why I think it, it's going to take longer, because the uh, offenses uh, were so grave and so extreme compared to Milosevic. What's people's reaction to you closing in on him? I think they'll be rejoicing in the streets uh, when, when they're brought to justice here in America and, and perhaps in, in other places in the world as well, certainly uh, Iraq for what, what they did in Iraq. There's no question about that. I, I'm sure there'll be parades over there uh, in Iraq when Bush and Cheney uh, are brought to justice. George W. Bush had to cancel his first trip following the admission in autobiography Decision Points that he ordered waterboarding. He shied away from Switzerland after Swiss MPs worked on a warrant for his arrest with New York's Center for Constitutional Rights. CCR senior attorney Catherine Gallagher joins us. Thanks a lot for coming on. Now, the common response is old Bush has contacts, no one can touch him, but you work with lawmakers around the globe. Why is he now cautious of traveling anywhere? The globe is this convention against torture. So most of the globe is obligation to investigate and, and punish George Bush. Actually, the Obama team uh, reached out to Switzerland and saw assurances that George Bush wouldn't be prosecuted and that the Swiss response was, we have an independent prosecutor and an independent judiciary, we can't make that uh, promise to you. Cowboy Republic, the six ways the Bush gang has defied the law, lists 200 pages of White House crimes. The author of that book is former head of the National Lawyers Guild, Marjorie Cohen. Thanks very much for joining us. What are the six ways the Bush gang defied the law? Okay, Daniel, and I just want to say, first of all, that there are many more than six ways, but I had to limit it 
Um, so that's why I, I only chose six, or the book would be as long as an encyclopedia. Um, the first, and I think in some ways the most serious, uh, is the illegal wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is a crime of aggression. Crime of aggression at Nuremberg was to be the supreme international crime. So then the second uh, violation of the law is the torture regime that was set up by Bush officials and their legal mercenaries, John Yu, Jay Bybee, and other lawyers. Third violation is war crimes, that, and torture is considered a war crime as well, but the killing of civilians, the targeting of civilians, two of the most notorious instances of war crimes, um, the Haditha massacre, where um, U.S. Marines basically executed about 24 men, women, and children in cold blood. Um, it was just horrific um, at, uh, at, at Haditha. And then the Fallujah massacre, um, which was done in retaliation for the killing of four Blackwater mercenaries, um, was a... Civilians were targeted. Um, U.S. soldiers went house to house and took them out and shot them. Um, they shot families crossing the river. Helicopters and snipers shot people. Um, there were uh, unknown numbers, hundreds of people that were killed in Fallujah. God bless America! Yeah. Then the fourth um, violation of the law is the prison camp that the United States maintains at Guantanamo. Um, then the fifth example of lawbreaking by the Bush administration was the illegal spying program, surveillance program, spying on Americans' conversations, and then a data mining program, very much like we've heard about lately from Edward Snowden. And then finally, um, the refusal to uh, fulfill the law. When Congress would pass a law, frequent George W. Bush would sign the law and then attach what we call a signing statement saying, yes, I'm signing this law but I am only going to follow the parts of it that I agree with. And, uh, and the president cannot make the law under the U.S. Constitution. That's up to Congress. Tomorrow, when Obama lands in South Africa, lawyers have filed for his arrest for genocide. The country that went through apartheid, attack on ethnic groups classed as inferior, charges the Obama administration's now doing the exact same thing. Indiscriminate confinement of Muslims without charge and targeted drone attacks on Muslim civilian populations around the globe. A charge worse than apartheid, in fact, constitutes genocide. The Muslim Lawyers Association brought the claim to prosecutors with attorney Yusha Tayyab. He joins us. It's great to have you on. Obama now expanding the war on terror to a war on whistleblowers and using drones over US soil. You note, as with apartheid, discrimination is spiraling out of control. It's a history that our people know. And so it's something we can identify with. And that is particularly pertinent to the South African community because, as you know, pre-94, we had extensive detention without trial in this country. And the comparative to the South African public is, you didn't condone it then. Why must you allow it to happen on an international basis now? And so this is a genocide, a, a torture, a, a perpetuated campaign against people of the Muslim faith. One of the judges in a Pakistani high court judgment that we've attached to our complaint uh, has declared the drone attacks to be illegal uh, and has asked the UN to investigate it. He seems to want to joke about the drone attacks. He's recorded as having said at one of his balls held in the US that if any person's had designs on his daughters, he's got predator drones. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. <laughs> you think I'm joking? At last week's G8 in Ireland, MP Claire Daly says corporate media should stop pretending Obama's anything but a war criminal. By any serious examination, this man is a war criminal. He has just announced his decision to supply arms to the Syrian opposition, including the jihadists, fueling the destabilization of that region and continuing to undermine secularism and knock back conditions for women. And to hell with the thousands more who lose their lives or the tens of thousands more who will be displaced as this war goes on. This is the man who has facilitated a 200% increase in the use of drones 
which have killed thousands of people, including hundreds of children. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. His administration, the Washington Post says, has in fact been the most secretive since Nixon, classifying 92 million documents a year. That's even more than Bush. Former intelligence officer Scott Rickard is investigating secret disastrous wars American people are waging in their name and funding and don't even know about. Thanks a lot for joining us. Tell us about those wars and why have they been a disaster? What people don't realize is that there's been a war for four years. They fought a war down through Sudan and Ethiopia and into Somalia. And then they tell us in the news that there's been a, a terrible drought and 250,000 people have died. When in fact, what had happened is that all the food supply and all the water supply was basically wiped out. And so they're left to die in the desert because now they're going and developing the oil fields in this new country created South Sudan. And, uh, and then when it comes to... Uh, to war crimes using uh, mess weapons of mass destruction. I mean, the depleted uranium lined Hellfire missiles, and this is a fact. Uh, they're fired from Predator and Reaper drones. They deliver at least 10 kilograms of depleted uranium, which permanently contaminates the target areas. So when you go back in there, you're guaranteed, if you spend too much time, to get some form of, uh, of, of horrific cancer that will kill you between uh, 10 and 15 years. That's how poisonous this stuff is. And we've got a lot of our soldiers around this stuff that are dying, but they don't talk a lot about it. It's like, the, it's like, it's like our generation's Agent Orange. I call him Obama the odious. And then you've also got these secret kill lists by Obama. You've got the legal wars in Libya and elsewhere. You've got, uh, uh, he started the covert war in, uh, in Yemen and, and basically deposed another uh, leader in that country. Uh, you've got uh, um, enormous mercenary presence in Iraq. Sitting presidents are harder to stop. Lawyers say they may have to wait till Obama steps down. Bush and his officials are effectively prisoners in their own country, fearful of arrest if they travel abroad. For the victims of their crimes, that's not punishment enough. This is The Truth Seeker.